Hello again, and welcome to our second video for Section 9 of GMA 10, where we'll conclude our discussion on perimeter and area. Recall in our last video, we went over some geometric definitions and formulas for the three basic shapes, and we practiced with those three basic shapes. In this video, we're going to cover some more con complex shapes and also look at some applications. Here we're going to find the area of a shape with a hole in it. Um, we want to find the area of the shaded shape um, shown here in this picture. So um, to do that, we're going to have to do two things. First, we're going to have to find the area of this entire rectangle. Okay, um, But we need to take this portion, this unshaded portion, out. So to do that, we'll find the, um, the area of the inside part and then subtract it from the total area. So the area of the rectangle we can represent as we know area is length times width, okay? So here we'll have um, 15 times 9. Uh, I'm going to do some scratch work out to the side here. 15 times 9. 9 times 5 is 45. 9 times 1 is uh, that's going to be 135 feet squared for the rectangle. And then we're going to have to find the area for the square inside. That area is going to be side squared or 4 squared, which is 4 times 4, or 16. So that's uh, 16 for the inside, 16 feet squared. To find the total area of the shaded portion, we'll subtract the two. So we'll do 135 minus 16. We'll have to borrow. So our total area for the shaded portion is going to be 119 feet squared. Here we need to find the area of some combined shapes. Um, if we look closely, we'll see that the shape on this page has uh, two different shapes as part of its components. We've got a rectangle here on the bottom, and we've also got a triangle here on the top. So to find the total area, we'll have to find the rectangle of the uh, or the area of the rectangle, and then the area of the triangle, and add those two together. So let's start with the rectangle. The uh, area of a rectangle is length times width. The length here is 10, and the width here is 30. I picked the length as 10 and the width is 3, but um, they remember those are interchangeable. It doesn't matter which one you pick. And when we uh, multiply those two together, we're going to get an area of 30 inches squared. Next, we have to find the area of the triangle. Call the area for a triangle is the base times the height divided by 2. What's the base of this triangle? Well, um, this is going to be the base. And since this is the second side of a rectangle, the base is going to be the same as this labeled side here. So the base for this triangle is going to be 10 times the height, which is 5, divided by 2. When we multiply on the top, we get 50 divided by 2. For a total area of 25 inches squared. So that's for our triangle. So the total area together is going to be 30 plus 25, or 55 inches squared. Here we're going to find the perimeter of a complex shape. Now we don't have a nice formula to find this shape, but we know that we can find the perimeter of any polygon by just adding the sides together. Okay, that's good that we've given that we're given most of the sides, but um, there's some that are missing. So the first side that we're going to have to figure out is um, this one right here. Okay, how are we going to do that? Um, well, let's look at all the vertical sides. We've got a um, a vertical side of five here, and a vertical side of two here. Okay, with this unknown here, we know that um, this imaginary line, if we kind of slide that two over is 2, right? And this whole side right here is going to have to add up to the 5 centimeters. So 2 plus what will give us a total side length of 5? That's going to be 3. Okay. And conversely, if we look at the horizontal sides, 
we've got um, four here, and we've got ten here, but this unknown horizontal side here. Well, if we kind of slide that four up to meet this line, okay, we've got a length of four plus an unknown length that will have to give us a total of ten. So four plus what will give us ten centimeters? That's going to be six. Now that we know all the sides, we can find the perimeter. The perimeter is going to be all the sides added together, so I'm going to start at this corner over here and then go all the way around making sure that I don't forget any sides. And I'm only accounting for the inside or the outside edges of this shape. So starting here, I'm going to get 4 plus 3 plus 6 plus 2 plus 10 plus 5. Okay, and we'll start adding. 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 6 is 13, plus 2 is 15, plus 10 is 25, plus another 5 is going to give us 30. So we have a total perimeter of 30 centimeters. And remember, for perimeter, we just use the linear unit, unit no need to square it. Now let's look at a word problem. A man wants to enclose a rectangular yard with a fencing that costs $12 a foot, including installation. Find the cost of enclosing the yard if its dimensions are four, uh, excuse me, 110 feet by 85 feet. So first, um, let's go ahead and just draw a rectangle. Okay, and then we'll plug in the dimensions. We said the length was 110 feet and the width was 85. Okay, so that's our, our, our shape of our garden. Okay, so what, what are we doing? We're uh, fencing in this garden, right? So we're going to be going around the edges of this. That tells us that we have to find what? The perimeter. Okay, recall the formula for the perimeter. Perimeter of a rectangle is two lengths plus two widths. So for this rectangle, it's going to be two times 110 plus two times 85. We'll have to do our multiplication first. Two times 110 is going to be 220 plus two times 85 is going to be 170. And when we add those up, we get 390 feet. Okay, but we're not done. We were asked to find the cost. Okay, so if the cost is $12 a foot and I've got 390 feet, I have to do 390 times 12 to find out my total cost. I'll start by multiplying by 2. Put in my zero placeholder and multiply by 1. And I'm going to get a total cost of $4,680. So to review section 9, we've covered uh, geometric definitions and formulas for our three basic shapes. We practiced on all those three shapes and then did some more practice with um, some more complex looking shapes and then looked at a word problem. So good luck with your work on section 9 and stay tuned for section 10 we're going to look at square roots.